with her, so she's not throwing much at the end of the month. And the next day, the same thing. The third day, they're like, we're going over to see how sick she is because doing this is getting serious. She wasn't there. She had been taken to an asylum. She, it turns out she had been an uh, ambulance driver in London during the war. And, uh, and, and then she came to America and was a movie actress. And her husband ran off with another uh, you know, actress. So she was totally <laughs> right for the break. There. And they had hired this vaudeville uh, performer to be the male lead. And uh, on the opening night of the out of town tryout in New Haven, he gets up on stage and in the middle of the first act. He totally jettisons the script and starts performing an auto act, which involves like sewing his fingers together and everything. <laughs> People loved it. People loved it. But he comes off the uh, stage at the end of the act. Like, what the hell are you doing? Not in the show. And, yeah. and, the, and the guy's like, do you hear that laughing? They're laughing at my stuff. They're not laughing at your stuff. Oh. Problem in Yeah. That was so much that they had to, to, right, he never appeared. He didn't appear in the second night. He went to the hospital. <laughs> but Herschel told me later, he's like, we were never brought up on charges for it. With that. <laughs> you know, he was very proud of that. <laughs> they got away with it. But the, so the show sort of limped on. They, they got a replacement, and the agent's like, oh, he's very good at learning his lines. He never learned. You know, uh, and... In, they're in Philadelphia, and it's not going well. It doesn't look like it's going to get smaller. <laughs> and Perlman and her first were totally bummed. And uh, Perlman gets a, 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 an editor of a magazine called Holiday, calls up and says, hey, do you want to have lunch here in town? You know, it was published in, Phil in Philadelphia, which is Curtis Publishing, and, you know, Saturday Evening Post and everything. Mm -hmm. A lot of publishing went on in Philadelphia. <laughs> so they go out to lunch, and... And the guy's like, oh, so what are you guys going to do after this show goes to New York? And now it's like, oh, I'm going to Hollywood to see my wife. I haven't seen her in months. And, uh, and, and Perlman's like, I'm going to go sword fishing in Florida. And they start talking. And Holiday Magazine was what it was, a uh, magazine It was essentially the editor just would pay writers. They would give them pretty lavish budgets to travel anywhere around the world and write pieces. So all these great writers wrote you know, I'm here in Istanbul and cool. all these wonderful things. So it was a great gig. And they start talking about, Al starts talking about his experience in Bali. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> he, had, he had started that trip by going to Tahiti and found this, you know, inauthentic culture. You know, all the natives were playing urban Berlin songs mm -hmm. on ukuleles, you know. It all looked like it came from Central Texas. Yeah. And... Uh, so Al says to Ted Patrick, the editor, you should send Sid there because he would have a field day with this stuff, you know. This would be really great. And Ted Patrick's like, that's a great idea. And, and Perlman's like, I'll only go if you, if you hire Al as the illustrator. Cool. You know, and one thing leads to another. I don't know how many martinis were drink that lunch, but by the end of lunch, Patrick has commissioned the two of them to travel around the world and do drawings. For three months. Nine months. Nine months. Old. Okay, and <coughs> it's great because they're yeah. like, they don't want to go awesome. back to New York, but you know, who wants to go back with a flop? I mean, Al knew everybody in the Don't theater. forget about the back. That's exactly yeah. what he thought. So <laughs> they sneak back into New York, they make a deal with um, Simon & Schuster to publish a book of the articles when they get back, mm -hmm. and they leave town. The nine months that he's on this trip is the longest time he was away from New York and from Broadway mm -hmm. in his whole career. And the book becomes a bestseller. I, I mean, it, that's what convinces Herschel that capitalism can't be so bad. Because he <laughs> thought any system that was so benevolently conceived that even yeah. he could make money could not be bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. Uh, but they, they, you know, so they had this, and you would thought they wanted to kill each other by the end of this trip. But now, within a few weeks, they're off on another adventure. Uh, Holiday has them do the sightseeing trip of New York, mm -hmm. then sends them to the Kentucky Derby oh. and down to Washington. And then <coughs> Perlman gets the idea to go around the world again, but this time with his family. Mm -hmm. And Hirschfeld illustrates that book, Swiss Family Perlman. And this this is the first one they did. Are um, they still in print, those other books? You can find them. <laughs> yeah, Westward Ha, Around the World, Nate Fishes. You can find them. Uh, I think they're still in print, but if not, you go to ABE Books and yeah, and you get a because the used copies you can probably get for ten dollars, yeah. you know. 
but there are they have been republished. And this one, uh, does that have the story with the, the robot? Oh, yes. And that, that originally appeared in the New Yorker? So I don't know where, I, off the top of my head, I can't tell you that for oh. sure. Because he, New Yorker was a regular, I mean, he was one of the people who helped create the idea of the humorous essay in the New Yorker. Mm -hmm. And that problem was okay. best known for that. Um, but the, but his, his pieces appeared everywhere. I mean, he was, he was a prolific writer. And, I mean, Picasso thought he was, and, and Kirchhoff thought that Perlman was the Picasso of literature, mm. you oh, know, wow. because he dealt beautifully with the abstract, and he had this wonderful way with, with the English language. I mean, once you start reading Perlman, you'll identify it right away. And if you've ever read anything mm. by Woody Allen, like any of his books or prose pieces, they are complete steel of Perlman. Nice. Uh, yeah. Repat. Uh, he did a, he, I think there's a, uh, the Woody Allen uh, film, I don't know if it's called Small Time Crooks, uh, Tracy Holman's in a bakery, and they, they, they decide to tunnel under to get to the bank next door, and it's literally a rip off of the Connecticut. There are these um, pretty easy to find? Like, I'm just wondering, like, should I get this now? Am I going to miss out? or? Um, you can find it. Like I said, okay. if I don't, I, I, you can get it here because this is a nice copy with a nice dust jacket and everything like that. That's the positive thing, mm. you know. So this is a sure thing. But you can go to AB Books or, or uh, a, a, you, you might even be able to go to Amazon, mm -hmm. you know. Because um, they are, I mean, this is wonderful because it's just a series. Well, they're all a series of short pieces. After the success of Westward Hall, which were a series of articles that appeared monthly in all the magazines, and when they were collected, it really turned into a novel. Al said to Perlman, well, oh, Sid, you know, you, you know how to do it now. So now just, you can become a novelist. But he never could. He, he never did. You know, Swiss Family mm -hmm. Perlman was a series of articles, and that's what he would do for the rest of his book. He would take a series of sort of monthly articles or regular articles and turn it into a long narrative. Yeah. But uh, he never made the commitment of writing a full book. That is a really Yeah. Oh, of course. <laughs> I, I got him personally. Good for some of the short attention. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No. no. <laughs> well, uh, in, in some ways, he sort of he, he anticipated the culture that we live in now. You know, uh, there are a little bit more than 140 characters, but you know, <laughs> it's, a, it, it's still they're short pieces. They're funny pieces. If you appreciate language. Yep. They're they're yeah. they're really wonderful because like, he's like Hirschfeld, you know, right to the point. Right, right. Well and Hirschfeld loved it because you know, Hirschfeld was very well read and you know, all his closest friends were writers. And because he understood what they were about. It just and, and he and if you ask them about a Broadway show, he would be like, Yeah, actors are really important and the sets and the scenery and the composers are important. But if you don't have the playwright it's you know He's dead. If you don't have that, you don't have a show. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, so he, yeah, he was a great guy. And uh, he he could still pick up his book, you know, 40 years later and read something and, and laugh about it. He had a collection of New Yorker magazines one time. And, and uh, I asked him about it. I said, why do you keep these? And he said, oh, well, every once in a while I pick them up and I read something funny in them. You know, he had kept them because they were funny works. Mm -hmm. And I was in this, I worked as uh, his archivist. I would go visit him in the studio once a week for 13 years. And uh, uh, I was, you know, he had this wall of magazines. I thought Al was a huge pack rat. But it turns out they were all magazines that had his drawings on Except one shop was all New Yorkers, and he had been famously banned from New Yorker in 1937. Really? Yeah, he did a uh, Peace for Life magazine where he took photos of famous people, and then a few strokes of his pen turned him into somebody else. Nice. And it actually goes to the heart of what his work is about, because we call it caricature. We have to call it something. He uses exaggeration. But when you talk about a caricature or something, it's usually a put down. You know, right. it's, it's usually making a commentary. And he didn't really mm -hmm. do that. He, he was capturing the action of the play and then creating a great drawing. You know, he understood that it had to look like the people and it had to sort of capture what the show was about. But that was easy for him. He was, he was more interested in the drawing. But uh, so he took these photos, he took a picture of Howard Walker and turned him into Joseph Stalin. 
and Ross was so offended at this 1937. Well, Stalin, I mean, that's different than this. <laughs> You yeah, know, but I mean, in 1937, else. if it had been 1947, okay, yeah, really okay, yeah. 1937, <laughs> but Ross was so upset by this man will never work in the magazine. Now, in 1993, they did a short profile of Hirschfeld, and they actually commissioned the self portrait, wonderful self portrait. And then a few weeks later, they call up and they said, you know, could we use, uh, would you do a drawing for us? I said, well, that's up to you. I'm talking to the art director. <laughs> They're like, what do you mean? I said, you know, he's been banned from the magazine. <laughs> she says, what are you talking about? And I tell her the story. Holy totally mortified. She was like, oh my God, you know, what could we do? I said, I'm pretty sure if you pay him to do a job, <laughs> you could pay him. And they started, they, uh, they started commissioning drawings from him. They often asked for them to be in color because they didn't want it to seem like it was something from the Times or something from something else. You know, they labored, like many people, under the assumption that he never did color work, mm -hmm. when in fact he did a lot of color work and throughout his career. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, But he did some wonderful pieces for them of very unusual, I mean, of uh, uh, Claire Booth Loose or um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Harold Balloon, you know, not the people you would normally associate with first world drawing. Uh, mm -hmm. um, but they were, you know, fun pieces. And of course, he had a chuckle about doing stuff for the New Yorker, but he never, he, never, he wasn't offended by it. And yeah. when he got banned from the New Yorker, yeah. You know, can't say happy about it, but he had so much other work. He was already in it, you know. And he, that was one of the mm -hmm. things, you know. He he had so many people that he grew for. He never worried about losing anybody. He knew he could always walk away from them. We have a couple of drawings here from Outdoor Life magazine. Mm -hmm. You know, very unusual, first of all, drawings from Outdoor Life. But for 12 years, he was in every issue. 12 the, years. Yeah, uh, oh, in the back page, they had a humor mm -hmm. piece that was written by a guy Patrick McMahon, and. Uh, and it's not Herschel's greatest work. And because it really, the humor pieces weren't that funny. And they were kind of very pedestrian. And Outdoor magazine, I mean. Right, it's just, mm -hmm. right. And it was this guy <laughs> sort of making up stories about his childhood and like crazy hunting stories mm -hmm. from your youth. It wasn't Herschel's like thing. <laughs> and the last piece he did, the art director calls up and says, well, it was supposed to be a deer on the roof. And uh, the art director says to Hirschfeld, like, this looks more like a moose. And Hirschfeld's like, you know what? I don't think I need to do this anymore, you know? <laughs> this isn't going to work out. I'm not changing it. And that's the last piece I'm doing for you. So he could walk away from that. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, you know what it's like. To walk away from any work, even if you're out Hirschfeld and you're doing well. Because for him, it was still drawing. You know, uh, he, that's what he got up in the morning to do, was to draw, and uh, and he loved it. And whether it was a show that you've never heard of and a person you never heard of, or it was the biggest star and the most important film, he did it the exact same way. Mm -hmm. I mean, he did, it wasn't like, this one's important, I've got to really try. You know, this one's not important, I don't have to work at it. He had only one setting, you know, and which was, I want to do a great drawing. And I really think now, um, younger people are seeing the drawings more like Herschel Sullivan than older people. Because if you know the performers, you can get caught up in thinking about the performers. Yeah. Oh, I love Carol Channing or Catherine Hepburn. She's so great. And you look at the drawing and you bring all that to the drawing. Uh, uh, if you're younger, I don't know how old you are. Young. Yeah. So you probably, have you seen a Catherine Hepburn film? Not recently. Right, right. But, and there's plenty of Telling of your peers who have never seen mostly, it. yeah, probably. right. So they can see the drawing without all uh, be unencumbered by all that yeah. stuff, <laughs> and so they can see it like Herschel's song because, like I said, it's we, a drawing. Yeah, just a drawing. He probably wasn't starstruck about any of those people at all. He was not. Mm -hmm. I mean, he. But when he got into the theater, he was like everybody else. He was excited to see what was going on, and he. I was just saying this to somebody else. He didn't look at it and say, "Oh, that production." 20 years ago was so much better. You know, he looked at it as what was happening today. Mm -hmm. Was it good for what was happening today? And you know, he lived completely in the present. That's mm -hmm. how you get to be 99 and a half nine and nine. do everything you were doing when you were 29 and a half. That's cool. Because he, he, did, he didn't think about the past. I mean, he hired me, essentially, so to you think, about think about that. So you think about the past. <laughs> Which is great. You know, this past was wonderful. I was loving it. 
And in the future, he wasn't a guy who was like, I'm going to do this in six years from now. Not a planner. Not a planner. Mm -hmm. I mean, not a, he would go to Europe, and this is so funny, we, we, we joked about this, we laughed about this, because our wives would be like, you've got to get everything taken care of. And his thing, and we, we, yeah. you know, we were in the famous way, it was like, mm -hmm. oh, you know, you get a car and you'll drive around, and when you're tired, you, you'll find some place to sleep. And, uh, <laughs> and he did that in his 90s. Wow. You know? And uh, his wife finally said, no, no, we have to make this for you. How many? Oh, I'm sorry. Did, Go ahead. Uh, do you know if he ever saw an, or had an opinion of um, when other people would um, not necessarily parody his work, but sort of try to contribute to it? Like sure. in The Simpsons, several times, there would be oh, yeah. caricature. Oh, those are homages. Yeah. yeah. Did, was he aware of those? Did he have any particular opinion on that? Um, he was pleased. Yeah. You okay. know, uh, it, you know the good ones. He thought they were great. You know, he he knew he he saw the Simpsons stuff, but he wasn't a Simpson watcher. You know, uh, so he didn't really get what that was all about. Right. Okay. But there were guys who made whole careers being second-rate Herschel. And no. it wasn't done in homage. It was done like yeah. It was, I mean, and Herschel was fine with that too. Oh really? He, he well. One time, the Times hired somebody who was obviously uh, copying his style. And he first called, wrote to the editor and said, Look, when you're a parent, you can see who you, you know who your children are. And let me tell you, that, that drawing is one of mine. <laughs> and uh, if you're going to use if you're going to use my work, you should have me do it. Right. <laughs> you know. And they didn't. And they didn't hire this person. They didn't. And it wasn't Al trying to get somebody out of the job. If they had done their own work. He would have had no problem. Right. With it. it just that uh, so the, the file that is so uniquely his. Right. You know. Well, there was nobody. You know, people mm -hmm. used to say, you know, I knew him for the last 13 years of his life. <laughs> and one time the Times called me in, and they're like, "So what are we going to do when he dies?" I said, "He will not be doing any more drawings." <laughs> <laughs> but they were like, "Who's the next Herschel?" I was like, there's bad one. news. There's, no there's, no Hirsch there's not another Hirschfeld. <laughs> I said, but, you know, there wasn't another Hirschfeld before. This was this Hirschfeld. Mm -hmm. There is just this Hirschfeld. Just like there are mm -hmm. so many just these artists. Right. Yeah. You know, the, the great artists have their own thumbprint. You yeah. know, we look at these drawings, and let's face it, nobody else could have drawn them. I mean, literally, mm -hmm. they are so uniquely his. And how do you do that? Because especially when you have an artist like Hirschfeld, who could take one line and all of a sudden, there's, everything's there, you know. But that's that's the thumbprint, you know. That's you know, we we all have our unique styles. Uh, I don't know if you're an artist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure yeah. that mm -hmm. you know, you can look at someone could look at your work, just looked at your work and said, oh, yeah, that's it. Like you know, your mother's handwriting. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's theirs. That's who they are. Mm -hmm. And and so for her spell, and when people try to come to them and say, well. They would want him to teach, and he couldn't teach. Mm -hmm. He's like, this is, <laughs> this is who I am. Yeah. This is what I do. I I, and he didn't think there was any uh, benefit to, uh, to training somebody to be like him. Mm -hmm. He was much more interested for you to be you. Right. you know? mm -hmm. And he was that way. He would have been as interested in your work as you are in his work. Mm -hmm. He was not a guy who was infatuated with himself. He was a very normal guy who just happened to be a genius. You know, he was, but he was, and he was into people and art. That's, those were things that excited him. You could see the, uh, the fascination with humans. And no, I for sure. Yeah, he, really, that's what he studied was people. Mm -hmm. He would come home from, like if he went to Europe for the summer, he'd come home and there was a Howard Johnson's in Times Square and he would go to that Howard Johnson's and he would get a window booth and he would, to get his chops back up, he would just draw people as they walk by. Mm -hmm. You know, just to sort of get that in, because the people on the street, you know, they're all characters, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, that was interesting to him, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, so all during his life, I mean, he drew plenty of what we refer to as civilians. And the best drawings are those when people came up and they had a character. You know, if you come up and you just like, they smiled. He could draw that, too. I mean, that's, also, I think, one of also his great secrets is, you know, when he started, all Marx Brothers were big, and John Barrymore was big. You know, these people are larger than life. Yeah. 
they're already caricatures. You don't have to do anything to Edwin to make him look mm. like Edwin. No. You know, to, to, uh, and then you have, by the mid-40s, you have Tennessee Williams and Arthur Miller and William Ng, and they are writing plays about normal people. When you think of, I don't know if you know The Glass Menagerie. Mm -hmm. Okay, Laura Wingfield in The Glass Menagerie is about the meekest, most mild person mm -hmm. in the American theater. Well, that should have been the end of her show. How do you caricature someone who is almost not there? Mm -hmm. But of course, that's a character. In itself, yeah. Right, mm -hmm. and so that's what he was good at. Mm -hmm. He was really a characterist. That's what he referred to himself as, you know, when pressed. It, because that, and that's what he like, looked at people, characters. Um, he, I mean, his life was full of these people who were oddballs. I mean, this guy could have spent all this time with the biggest celebrities in the world. Right. Um, yeah. You might have Lillian Gish at the table mm -hmm. with a guy who is, I mean, with an oddball. And it didn't seem weird to him because they were also people with mm -hmm. unique personalities. Mm -hmm. And he enjoyed being with them. And he, he liked a good conversation. You know, when he had, he had people at his house like twice a week for decades. I mean, he did the same thing his entire <coughs> life, all the way up to the end. It was their so long. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you know, he, he did exactly, I mean, to do what you love to do, mm -hmm. and to do exactly what you want to do your whole life. Yeah, yeah it's very helpful. He had good genes. Uh, his father in, literally invented the term senior citizen. Oh, wow. Uh, no way. <laughs> no. The Hirschfeld story is just totally That's weird and wonderful. Um, um, sorry. Uh, no, no, um, we've actually got to go back to the studio. It's already past four. Oh, what, where do you guys work? Oh, no. oh wow. Yeah, have you got anything interesting? Uh, we're working on a show for HBO right now called Animals. Ooh. So we did a little, uh, little studio field trip. So the, like, oh, the nice. Day, yeah. Character design department. So yeah. We've out. got a couple yeah. of animals here. Yeah, yeah. Totally. <laughs> Oh, oh, we're going to grab a couple more uh, quick shots yeah. of the table. Make sure. sure. Man, but, uh, well, my pleasure. Sorry, I can, I can uh, listen to this all day. No, no. Uh, um, uh, you don't have to buy it, but this book has many of these stories and many more. Uh, right, there you go. My, my copy? Uh, it's, uh, I wrote that uh, two years ago for Knopf, and it's, uh, it, it is a, it's got 400 drawings. Oh, wow. So. I definitely want to pick this one up. I'm just going to yeah. wait till after the holidays. Yeah, definitely. And it's not cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll sign it for you today. You know? <laughs> okay. Cool. Well, great to meet you. Yeah, likewise. Thank you very much. Um, now I'm going to be looking for the show. Because yeah. I'll be cool. like, hey, I met you guys. Work Check it out. Um, <laughs> do you know a um, uh, painter, uh, Philip Burke? Oh, sure. Okay, Art is fantastic. This kind of reminds me of like, the same spirit of Hirschfeld just in terms of a very unique style and just being able to capture that completely capture the Hirschfeld. But again, a, uh, a signature work that if you saw even a piece of his work, you would know exactly mm -hmm. Yeah, so, uh, spiritually, I feel like they're, they're on the same level. Oh, yeah. There's a uh, Steve Broughton. He's <laughs> another great. Uh, Steve Broughton? Yeah. Uh, well, he does a lot of more wonderful work. He's a great character. He's a great, unique style that once you start looking at the work, you'll be like, oh, yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Risco, of course, is great. 